Call me a doctor. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> oh my gosh. My in-laws watch this show. They're just going to be like, I have no idea what he's talking about. All right, Montreal Canadiens, they win everybody 3-2 in overtime. What a game. What a game. And you know what? I had like last season PTSD, not thinking they're going to tie it up. I'm like skipping ahead on the PVR because I'm watching the game after work. And then the Habs do this. Like, you got to be kidding me. And you know what? We're going to start this uh, presentation off today with um, the game tying goal because I'm sorry, man. I'm not really sorry, actually. But Cole Caulfield with a pass from Jonathan Duran, who, by the way, was not having a good game. And then he totally redeemed himself okay that's a line from dumb and dumber if you don't know <laughs> but uh this cross ice feed was one for the ages we needed this from jonathan druid desperately let's take a look at this goal we just we just gotta watch this guys we gotta watch this let's take a look it comes back for Caden Gooley. he'll hand it off for jonathan druid watch by carter pats across copyon scores Oh, it's beautiful. That's just beautiful. I had to play it. <laughs> I had to play it, man. So good. So, so good. Oh, man. Where do we start with this game? Well, again, the Habs win 3-2 in overtime. And uh, the return of Jeff Petrie was in this game. Uh, like he got the booze, of course. He got the tribute, though, too, which was during a TV timeout. He got a little video tribute. Uh, eight seasons in Montreal for Jeff Petrie. So shout out to him. Uh, one of my favorite players when he was here last year, obviously, requesting the trade, leaving town now. Seems to be happy in Pittsburgh. They started off 2-0 until last night. They're 2-0-1 after this game. And you got the Habs at 2-2. I mean, I wouldn't have expected two wins in the first four games. <laughs> like, Anyway, uh, they, they surprised me the other night in Montreal when I was there. And they surprised me even more so against Pittsburgh. Uh, Evgeny Malkin getting the two goals. The first goal in this game, the puck didn't even go in the net. So we all thought it was a weak goal by Sam Montembeau. But it wasn't. And uh, it didn't count. So... But uh, Evgeny Malkin getting the other two goals. And then uh, the first goal for the Habs. Uh, my gosh, for some reason off the top of my head, it's escaping me. But it shouldn't be. It will come back to me in a second. And I know you guys will correct me in the comments, as, as you always do. But <laughs> for some reason, it's escaping me. But we got to talk about Caden Gooley having himself a career game. 24 plus minutes. He had hits. He had block shots. He had two assists, including the assist on uh, Caulfield's tying goal here. Of course, and uh, man, you know what? Caden Gooley is somebody that I, when I saw him, when I, I just bef before I even saw him play any hockey at all, I just had a good feeling about this kid. And and he was selected in the 2020 draft. He's still 20 years old. It's incredible what he's been doing and his puck movement, his poise. The big theme out of last night has been Gooley's maturity. He covered Crosby for what was it, 16 out of 18 minutes last night. So. You got to think to yourself that the Canadians got that draft pick right in 2020, taking Caden Gooley 16th overall and just doing so many things right. It's just unbelievable. Uh, he was the second star of the game. He was a plus one, 24, 43 exactly for his time on the ice. And how could I forget um, the goal? The first goal was Nick Suzuki, by the way. <laughs> I just had to remind myself. He came in. He got the shot just past uh, the Pittsburgh goalie there. And then came around for the wraparound to, to tuck it in because the puck didn't cross the line. But that's a Nick Suzuki kind of goal. Like just, I don't know. He has these creative ways of scoring. So um, Suzuki winning over um, over sixty percent of his faceoffs too. He had himself a game. I thought Montembeau had a steady game. Um, he kept them in it, and he had that one kick save in the third period actually, um, where uh, he anticipated the shot really well. But it was a it was a great great save from Sam Montembeau. And shout out to Jake Allen, who's just. I don't know if his wife officially gave birth to their third baby, but they were expecting, and that's why Jake Allen wasn't playing last night. So shout out to him. Um, I thought Evgeny Dadnov actually looked pretty good last night. You guys saw the chance where he was falling down and almost almost got his own rebound to put it in. Dadnov had some jump, and I thought the whole team actually had some jump last night, especially in the first period. That's why I was encouraged to keep watching this game because the first period, the guys were just... All four lines had energy. Everybody was, everybody was you know, just... Uh, Wheeling and wheeling and dealing and trying to create chances and and the Habs had over 37 shots in this game. Let's even look at the shot totals really quick while we have you guys. Um, if I could uh, possibly get that here, um, I don't like pausing in between these uh, in in between these videos, but over 37 shots actually here it is. Sorry, 39. So the Habs had 39 shots to Pittsburgh's 28. Uh, the Habs out hit them 19-17. 
The Habs won 26 faceoffs. Pittsburgh won 28. Um, equal in penalty minutes, six minutes each side. Um, Montreal went one for three on the power play with Kirby Doc's winner. So, um, I mean, I didn't pull up the Kirby Doc winning goal, but it was a beautiful feed from Sean Monaghan. And uh, that's what we'll talk about right here. So, Sean Monaghan had himself a game too. He's looking really good so far with the Habs. Looks steady out there, just doing his job, uh, playing on the line with Kirby Doc. And uh, yeah, they look good. They, they look really good. I, I liked what I saw from from Kirby Doc the whole game too, though. I, I mean, both of these guys I, I thought stood out to me, and I, I think Kirby Doc is uh, showing his maturity for his age also, and just the fact that he already has NHL experience. So, shout out to both of these guys because they're playing both very, very well. Um, I already mentioned Dadnov Caulfield with the wicked one timer from Jonathan Duran. So we got to talk about Duran because Duran was not having himself a good game. And uh, fortunately, he got it together in the last minute or so with uh, the tying goal, the cross ice feed to Cole Caulfield. But that's where you saw Jonathan Duran's talent and creativity, which is what you expect from a guy. So, you know, Nick Suzuki was asked after the game about the Caulfield goal. And quite simply put, Jonathan Duran didn't, you know, make that play because it was drawn up, you know, in the timeout or whatever. It wasn't because of that. It just he saw Caulfield. Caulfield was wide open, as you guys saw in that goal. He was wide open on the other side for that one timer. And he just put put the puck on his tape. Um, but other than that, Jonathan Durant wasn't having a great game. He looked like he was on his way out of Montreal. Like he could just tell that like the fans were on him and and they were. They were some of them were. But uh he wasn't having himself a good game, unfortunately. And then you know Caulfield Caulfield burying it. I mean, Cole doing what he does. He was buzzing all game. I thought Caulfield was buzzing all night long. Like I said, in the first period, the whole team was buzzing. But Caulfield's everywhere. Like, he's he's not afraid to go. Like, this kid battles, too. Like, Caulfield actually battles. And he creates loose pucks. He got a lot of loose pucks. He had pucks turned over. He looked really good. So, uh, really happy for him. And again, like I mentioned, Sean Monahan already had himself a game. So, I want to pull him up and... Uh, Give him a nice uh, little shout out here. Uh, this was my view for the game the other night, just in case you're wondering. This is my seats in Montreal. Um, and then Kirby Doc, like I mentioned, already got the overtime winner. And the Habs were on the power play for this one. They had their opportunities. And then it was just a simple play. Monaghan just kind of a bit of a no-look pass over to Doc to bury it for, for the OT winner. And the Habs come up with two points somehow in this game. And then, uh, you know, even in the standings, the Habs, let's, let's just pull it up just for fun, even though the standings are sincerely unimportant at this time of the year but uh in the well actually in the eastern conference the habs are are in 10th but in the atlantic division the habs are in fifth right now so they're just below the leafs actually tied for, for tied for four points with the leafs and the panthers right now so um got to take them when you can get them guys we got to enjoy these w's when we can get them so leave a comment down below let me know your thoughts on the game I was thoroughly entertained, especially by the end of it. I almost wanted to turn the game off and go to bed until I actually fast forwarded a bit. I saw that it was 2-1 from Nick Suzuki's goal, and then we tied it up and went into OT and took it home. So, um, yeah, it was a good night. Jeff Petrie's return, eat your heart out. Uh, and then Jake, Jake Allen obviously celebrating the birth, birth of his third child. So that win was for him also. And uh, leave your comments down below, guys. This was a fun one to do. So. We'll see you on the next one, guys, and uh, tune into my video. If you haven't watched it, I just did a jersey reveal video for this one that I'm wearing right now. As you can tell, it's your eyes, Levkovsky. So go check that video out. I'm going to post the link right here for you guys, and uh, I'd appreciate the support for that too. So all my best, guys. Talk to you soon. Go Habs, go. Talk to you soon. Ciao.